Here's your first warned weather forecast first. Sponsored by Anderson Collision Center. Visit driveanderson.com. Well, it's a hot afternoon across the state line as many spots made their way into the 80s and even a couple spots touched near 90 degrees for the high temperature earlier this afternoon. Rockford officially reaching 88 degrees, officially reaching that 90 degree mark down in Sterling. Many other spots remained in the 70s or into the 80s as we got into the afternoon. Now we've dropped back quite a bit with some spots already down into the 60s across the board because of a lake breeze that's been moving off from Lake Michigan, helping to cool off our temperatures, also firing up quite a bit of storm activity off to the south. There is a flash flood warning to our very far southern portions of our viewing area, but the bulk of that storm activity has remained well to the south, and that continues to be the case later on here into the night tonight. Tomorrow, we're going to be a little bit cooler back down into the 60s compared to the 80s where we were today. However, we do have to talk about more showers and some storms. I'll let you know how things cool off and eventually when we see our next rain chance coming up in your most trusted forecast a little later. Live from Fox 39, WQRF-TV Rockford, and your home team, Eyewitness News at 9 starts now. The cow team found dead after she hadn't been seen in days. Now one man is in custody. And a major sinkhole issue in Rockford is forcing emergency repairs. The damage in multiple locations across the city. Plus, a chance to honor a local leader who died after she spent decades devoted to helping the city of Rockford. Good evening, I'm Jess Lipson. Taylor Castro is off tonight. Thanks for joining us. Tonight, a man is in custody after a 15-year-old is found dead. Police are calling the investigation a homicide. The Cal Police got a missing persons report for the teen yesterday. She hadn't been seen by her family since Thursday. Police were able to figure out that she had been at a house on College Avenue that day, just east of NYU, NIU's campus across the Kishwaukee River. This afternoon, they found her body in the same block. A suspect has been taken into custody and charges are pending. Police say the two know each other. Look for any updates on, our, on this story on our website, mystateline.com. A reminder for people who have the emergency SOS feature turned on on their cell phones. The Rock County 911 Communication Center reports they've had over 50 hangups in 12 hours. They're asking to check the emergency SOS setting and if it's on to be careful of pocket dials. The 911 center has had what they call an abundance of 911 pocket dials from cell phones. Even if you hang up, a squad is sent out to track the location and talk with the caller which for the communication center is very time consuming. Federal prosecutors scored, big, scored a big win in their fight against corruption in the Illinois Capitol. Last week, the so-called ComEd Four were found guilty on all counts of corruption and bribery. They had been funneling jobs to consultants approved by former House Speaker Michael Madigan in exchange for Madigan's support of ComEd legislation. Now, some House Republicans are using this as an opportunity to call for major ethics reform. This has been a sad week for the state of Illinois. Uh, the verdict really shows us that we need changes, we need ethics reforms, we need modification uh, to the rules of which our government works. Uh, but I would say nothing has changed in Springfield. After the verdict, current House Speaker Emanuel Chris Welch sent out a statement saying that restoring trust in government was paramount. Senator Dick Durbin is calling the controversy surrounding Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas a tangled web that just gets worse. This afternoon, a recent report from ProPublica revealing more potential conflict of interest donations. Sen Chief Justice Roberts has the power in his hands to change this first thing tomorrow morning. He could announce a code of conduct for the court and finally mean something. He could announce that the court will be subject to at least the, the minimal standards that apply to all other federal judges. This is the Roberts Court, and history is going to judge him by the decision he makes on this. He has the power to make the difference. Senator Durbin is the chair of the Senate Judiciary Committee and says it is looking to gather more information before it considers proposing a code of ethics for the high court. President Biden's approval ratings are down. More than half of voters say they don't approve of his job performance. According to the latest Washington Post, ABC News polls out today, his job approval rating has fallen to an all-time low of 36%, and 63% of responders don't believe he has the mental sharpness to serve efficiently as president. The recent death of longtime TV star Jerry Springer has sparked discussion about pancreatic cancer. Springer, along with Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Patrick Swayze, and Alex Trebek, all died from the disease. It is the third leading cause of cancer-related deaths, 
6,400 people each year are diagnosed, and it's more commonly found in men. We haven't really identified a, a cause of pancreatic cancer. Of all of the pancreatic cancers, about 5 to 10 percent are, are found in families, are associated with a genetic cause. The other 95 percent occur sporadically uh, without a good cause. There's no specific screening for pancreatic cancer and symptoms can be vague, or in some cases, no symptoms at all. You should check with your doctor if you become jaundice, have back pain, and weight loss. Emergency work is underway as sinkholes pop up around Rockford. The stormwater team was notified of an eight-foot deep sinkhole on the east side of Gambino Park. They were able to fill it. A construction team also made fixes on 15th Street and 18th Street over Keith Creek, we're told the old limestone and mortar retaining walls failed, eroding the bank and creating sinkholes. And a repair was needed due to erosion on Trainer Road over Madigan Creek. Lots happening in the state line this week, from saying goodbye to longtime leader in Rockford to taking a tour of the murals throughout town. Today kicks off the National Travel and Tourism Week. Tomorrow, the Rockford Area Convention and Visitors Bureau will take a walk around town to check out different creative murals. You'll learn about the artists and their inspiration. The tour starts at noon at City Market's Outdoor Pavilion downtown. City's First Church is once again teaming up with the Northern Illinois Food Pantry to hand out boxes of fresh groceries. The Rockford Church held dozens of these during COVID. Anyone who needs a little help this month can drive up to Spring, the Spring Creek location on Tuesday and volunteers will put the box in your trunk. The food distribution starts at 10 a.m. The Rockford community can pay their respects to Alderwoman Linda McNeely this week. Family members are holding a visitation Wednesday from 9 to 11 a.m. at the Macedonia, Macedonia Baptist Church on Morgan Street. McNeely died last month at the age of 67. She served the 13th Ward for 26 years. And you can grab some flowers for your mom while giving back to a local nonprofit. Rosecrans's annual flower day, flower day at Gensler Garden is Thursday. The two have been partners for nearly 30 years. A portion of the sales on Thursday at either of the locations, 11th Street or Rhodes in, in Loves Park, goes back to Rosecrans to support locals who need a little help. Multiple people were killed yesterday from a mass shooting at a Texas mall. Coming up, we see how people are honoring those laws. Our temperatures made their way up into the upper 80s and even low 90s in a couple spots across the state line, at least here in Rockford, three degrees short of a record set over 100 years ago. I'll let you know if it cools down anytime soon, if the rain is going to make a difference in our forecast coming up in just a few minutes. You're watching Eyewitness News, your home team with Taylor Castro, Reagan Holgate, and meteorologist Jordan Wolf. Tragedy in Texas in the south of the state a driver crashed into a migrant shelter, killing several people in, a near, Dal in near Dallas. A gunman opens fire at an outdoor outlet mall, leaving eight people dead and several others injured. Melissa, a Melissa Adden has the latest from Allen tonight. Investigators from the FBI, along with local law enforcement officers, searched the home of the suspect, 33-year-old Mauricio Garcia, who allegedly opened fire at a Texas outdoor mall Saturday afternoon. <laughs> Authorities are reviewing this graphic video showing the moment the gunman stepped out of a vehicle and opened fire at the Allen Premium outlets, sending shoppers running for safety. There's this guy dressed in all black, wearing a vest, has an assault rifle, and he's just shooting at people. Allen Police Chief saying an officer who was at the mall heard the gunfire and responded, shooting and killing the suspect. Shooter is now. We believe at this point that the shooter acted alone. This surveillance video shows an employee at the mall leading customers to a service corridor. Police secured the scene and evacuated shoppers and employees. I need somebody to take command on the south side of this outlet mall. We've got thousands of people down there now. It was very scary. I seriously thought that I was not going to make it out. Quatina Ely was at the mall. Her parents were outside. He began firing towards them and they began to run and they both fell to the ground. Maybe he thought that he had shot them, so he turned the gun and began shooting 
in the other direction. The community now mourning for the eight victims who were killed and praying for those who are currently being treated at the hospital. The victims range in age from 5 to 61 years old. Texas Governor Greg Abbott plans to visit Allen, Texas Sunday afternoon, saying he wants to help begin the process of providing hope and healing. A driver is accused of crashing into a migrant shelter in Brownsville this morning. Eight people died, most of them migrants from Venezuela who arrived in the U.S. not long ago. At least 10 others were hurt. The driver was arrested and charged with driving rec recklessly. Police say he is not cooperating right now. There's no motive in this crash. The warmest day since September turns to storms. So what will the next few days bring us? Meteorologist Jordan Wolf is back after the break next. Now, your first warned weather forecast from meteorologist Jordan Wolf. It was a very hot afternoon across the state line today with many areas that made their way into the upper 80s and even a couple spots into the low 90s. That was not quite center, centered just around here. Many spots across the plains and the Midwest we're quite warm this afternoon, but a little bit more of a local look. Temperatures locally did make it into the upper 80s, as I mentioned, including reaching 88 degrees at the Rockford Airport, up to 90 degrees for that high temperature in Sterling. As we got a little bit more of that sunshine and dew points remained a little bit on the lower side earlier this afternoon, that was allowing those temperatures to warm up quite a bit quicker than what may have been anticipated, at least during the day yesterday, allowing us to get into the upper 80s. We've since dropped back quite a bit, along with our dew points that have risen as we have some rain that's been working its way a little bit further off to the south. We look at satellite and radar now, a very, very active uh, evening right now is what we're looking at with a lot of that storm activity centered a little bit further off to the south of our area at the moment. However, we do have some of those spottier showers showing up here locally across the area as well. This is what we looked at with we see those storms that were developing over the last few hours. This is a little bit further off to the south. However, it does show a very interesting look. We see this line that comes off from the lake. That's actually a lake breeze off of Lake Michigan that actually initiated a lot of the storm development off to our south south and southeast. That has been producing some very, very heavy rainfall in many areas, including some of our areas a little bit further off to the south. That includes southern Lee County and southern DeKalb County that are now under a flash flood warning until 1230 this morning, or the overnight tonight, because of some of the heavier rain that has been falling. Now we also have to watch out for the development further out to the west as well with our next round of storms that is currently developing across parts of Iowa that will eventually work its way in. I don't think that those have initially as much severe threat. However, we do need to watch for that development of those storms potentially with some very heavy rainfall once again. A severe thunderstorm watch remains in effect for Joe Davies, Stevenson, Carroll, Whiteside and Lee counties until midnight tonight. That's where we're going to be seeing mostly the bulk of those storms staying off to the south. Our SkyTrack camera overlooking Beloit, Wisconsin was showing some lightning earlier turned off to the or to the south, but now looking at that we're looking a lot more of the cloudier conditions here today. The rest of the evening temperatures continuing to fall back into the 60s and even into the low 50s as we get into the overnight tonight. Futurecast continues to clear a lot of these storms out of the area. The bulk of the heaviest rainfall centered across the southern portions of our viewing area. As we get into the evening tonight, things will actually clear a little bit as we get after midnight. Temperatures only falling back into the 50s with a lot more of that rain as well. Tomorrow, we are a lot cooler than where we were earlier today. Temperatures only rising back up into the upper 60s with some scattered showers and even a few storms once again continuing into the afternoon and in the in the evening. Some of those scattered showers and storms once again for Monday. A lot of sunshine for Tuesday and Wednesday though a lot cooler as well. Temperatures still in the 70s with more rain chances returning by the end of next week. Thanks Jordan. Reagan's in next with sports. Golf season is in full swing and the Boiling Girls team has a lot to prepare for. Reagan will bring us that story. She's next. Now sports with Reagan Holgate. The Boiling Girls golf team has a pretty exciting summer ahead of them. They get to play one more time with their two graduating seniors, and it's on the biggest stage yet. Here's their story. For the Boiling Girls golf team. Oh. There's never going to be a group like us again. They thought their season ended with a second place finish at state. Another chance to maybe 
win. I came so close at state, uh, who knows. But a text from their head coach in January told them otherwise. Bobby just texted us and was like, hey, we got invited to the Nationals, by the way. And I was like, oh my gosh. The girls will head south in July to compete in the PGA High School Golf National Invitational at the PGA Frisco Golf Campus for the first time. We are going to Frisco, Texas, and it's a brand new course and it's like the official like PGA course. The invitation only field consists of golfers from across the country. It's a three day 54 hole stroke play event. I think good goal for us is just to try to do better than we did at state and only compete against ourselves because we don't know what we're going up against down there. Boylan is ranked 73rd out of 600 teams. They're also the first Rockford area team to represent this region at nationals. I like to think uh, our team, just a small 1A team from Rockford, Illinois, got recognized as a team that could possibly play against all uh, other teams around the whole entire country. You didn't like, think we could make it this far, but we did. And I'm super proud of our team. It's just this group of five Titans, and now they get one more chance to compete together as a team. I think, like, one last time with the whole team, it's going to be so fun. Like, I'm just so excited just to spend one last time with them over the summer. They won the Nick 10 Conference, regionals, sectionals, and added a runner-up finish at state. Now they have a chance for more at the national level, a chance to keep making history. Best Boylan golf team, I want to say, like, ever. Um, so our names will go down in history. Like, it's just crazy to think about. Yeah, it is pretty crazy. The tournament takes place July 10th through the 12th, and why not bring home a natty? Good luck, girls. And it was a beautiful day for a Sunday afternoon of baseball at Wrigley Field. The Cubs were trying to dust off those brooms and sweep the Marlins. The Cubs were trying to stay alive in the ninth inning, though, and Cody Bellinger knocks one down deep to center, and Ian Happ rounds the bases to make his way home. Next batter will be Eric Hosmer. And that's a base hit. And the Cubs have tied this one up, and we are headed to extras. Five extra, to be exact. All the way to the 13th now. Ian Happ hits a liner up the middle. These boys just don't quit. All tied again at four, but this one will end in the 14th when Tucker Barnhart goes out swinging. It was a long road to get here, but the Marlins get it done, five to four. The White Sox finish things off in Cincinnati with the Reds. Alberto Hanser drills one back to the track to start things off, and the White Sox lead 2-1. to one. But here's where the craziness starts to ensue. The Sox will force a pitching change in the second. Yes, the second inning after seven runs. But it doesn't stop there. Gavin Sheets sends one to the moon. A three-run shot to make it an 11-run inning. That's the first time the Sox have done that since 2007. 17 runs on 18 hits. That's just crazy. Sox win 17-4. to That's sports. We'll be right back. A hot and humid day has now led to storms developing on the First Horn Interactive Radar from Rockford Auto Glass and more. The bulk of those storms have remained further off to the south. Right now, though, there is a flash flood warning in effect until 12.30 a.m. for Southern DeKalb and Lee counties. That goes into effect right now as there's been a lot of rain that has fallen. Some scattered showers and storms remain possible tomorrow, but dry for the beginning of the week back into the 70s by the end. Thanks for joining us. Have a great night.